Welcome to tutorial number three. I'm actually really excited about this one because we're gonna jump into specific human fall flat level mechanics and how we can test out our scenes that we're building. So let's jump right in. So I'm going to go to the scene that we were working on last time, this one with all the pillars, and I'm going to show you a quick time lapse of me applying all the principles from the previous tutorial and building somewhat of a small level out of this, and then we will start applying the level mechanics that I will teach you to this scene. So let's go. All right, so I made my little scene here. I put together some prefabs using all the techniques that we discussed in the previous tutorial. And before I get too far in this, I wanna make sure that my human spawns in the correct point in the scene. So to change where I spawn into my level, I'm going to select the initial spawn point, and this shows exactly where my character is gonna spawn. The white line, that is where they will fall, and the red circle is where they will land. And then these transparent cubes on the ground, those indicate where the other players will land if it's more than just one player playing your level. So I want my players to spawn farther back than this has. So I'm going to move it back here and I'm gonna make that my initial spawn point for this level. And now I really wanna test this just to make sure that it's fun and that it functions as I intended it to. And so there's a few steps I need to do before I can actually test my scene. The first one is I need to make sure Steam is running in the background on my computer because Unity needs to check that I own the game and use some of the programming there. So Steam has to be open in the background. Now the second thing that we need to do, which I'll admit isn't completely necessary, though it'll help you a lot, is to open up the Human Fall Flat Discord server and go to the workshop section of channels. And while you're there, you'll notice that there's a workshop support channel where there's lots of creators such as myself who are on there every day and helping people create their levels if they have any questions. So if you get stuck and you don't know how to continue, that's an excellent resource and I recommend going there. But that's not why we're there in this tutorial. If you go to the FAQ channel or the Frequently Asked Question channel, there is a post near the top where IceCubes posts a download for a lockincursor.cs file and you're gonna to wanna to download that and it'll download straight into your web browser. I'm going to go back to Unity, I'm going to open up my downloads and I'm gonna grab this lockincursor.cs and I'm going to drop it right here in the assets folder. And that'll show up right here um, inside, of my, inside of my assets folder after I do that. And then I'm gonna click and drag this and drop it in my level object. Now again, that step is not necessary. It's just going to make my life easier because I can lock my cursor in place while I'm testing. And I'll show you what that means because we should be ready to test our level now by hitting the play button at the top of the screen. Okay, so here I am in my level. And that lock and cursor, now when I hit L on the keyboard, I can have my cursor, or if I'm hovering over my scene, I can hit L and it hides my cursor so it's just like I'm in the game while I'm testing. And I'm gonna try this first jump to make sure it's possible. And it looks like it is. <laughs> That's tricky. I really like that. 
Okay, I'm gonna hurry and test the rest of my level, um, and I'll just stick it into a time lapse so you don't have to sit through all of me testing it. Okay, so I've run into the first problem of my level. I swung that lantern over there and then I fell off and now the lantern's not here. So I can't, I can't swing back to where I want to be. And a little trick for when you're testing, um, I can hit L and it frees up my cursor. I can go to my scene and now I can navigate to anywhere I want in the level. I can put myself back over here and I can go to human, drop human, and then it drops my player right where I want to be. So I can come back over here and I can keep testing my level even though I know it's broken in that one area. And something that would fix this is if I exit testing by hitting the play button again, is I could want a checkpoint right here. So that once I make it to there, then if I fall off, I'll respawn instead of at the very start of my level back where I want to be. So to make a checkpoint, you're gonna to wanna to right click on your level, hit create empty, and we're gonna call this checkpoint one. This will be our first checkpoint. And to make it a checkpoint, I'm gonna click add component box collider, and then I'm gonna add component checkpoint, okay? And that's all I need for this. The things I need to click is the layer, it needs to be set to triggers, and then the box collider needs is trigger on. So now I have a checkpoint, it's the same as the spawn point basically, but with this green transparent box, that's the box collider, and that's the section of area that I need to hit to trigger the checkpoint. So. I want to make this bigger, so I'm going to come to my box collider, select edit collider, and now each side of this cube have a little green dot, which I can select to make this bigger. So I'm going to change my checkpoint to this size, where I'm basically saying if I make it to anywhere on this island, is going to trigger the checkpoint. And now, when I go back to test my level, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I already triggered the checkpoint. Oh, okay. So I made a I made an error here, which is good because you'll be able to witness it. Um, I forgot to change the number of my checkpoint. So because that number is zero, it still thinks this is the spawn point. When in reality, this should be number one, so it doesn't get confused with the spawn point. And every subsequent checkpoint I make, so let's go to checkpoint number two, this number needs to be set to two to avoid errors in my level. So checkpoint one, number one there. Checkpoint two, number two there. And now I'll go ahead and I'll put the second checkpoint where I would want the second checkpoint. There. That's a good checkpoint. Okay. Now, let's test my level. Okay. So, it worked. I spawned in the beginning like I'm supposed to. And if I jump off the level here at the beginning, I respawn at the beginning. But I'm just going to use my shortcut here. I'm going to go to the scene. And I'm going to drop my human inside the area. You can see it popped up saving in the top right hand corner. It means I've reached the second checkpoint. And if I jump off here now, I land in my second checkpoint. And same with my third checkpoint, which is right here. Dropping my player there, it saves again. And now when I jump off, it spawns me at the third checkpoint instead because I triggered the third checkpoint. All right, so just to keep myself a little bit more organized than I am right now, 
I'm going to right click my level, create an empty, and I'm going to call this level mechanics. And inside of this object, I'm going to put all of these um, spawn points, fall triggers, pass triggers, and directional light, which will just keep my level a little, a little bit more organized than it was before. So we know what spawn point is now, and we know what the checkpoints are now. The fall trigger, that's this big green box that's below our level, which indicates where the game will respawn the player. So right now, if the player falls anywhere inside of that green box, it'll respawn them at the active checkpoint. And sometimes your level will grow beyond this green box. And what you'll need to do is just simply expand this green box using the Edit Collider button to make sure all of the areas inside of your level where you want your player to respawn if they fall are covered by the fall trigger. And this, you can have as many as you want. So I can copy and paste it. And now I have a second fall trigger where you can see, look, I've got them both. Where if I want, for example, part of my level, I want the fall trigger to be higher than the, than the other. I can grab it like this and I can move my fall trigger to be higher over here. Whatever I want, you can have as many fall triggers as you want. The next one you should know about is the pass trigger. So right now it's this little green box. And what this is, is it's the trigger that tells the game the player has completed the level. And so for my little level here, I'm going to place the pass trigger right here. And I'm gonna say, if they make it anywhere onto this ending island, just like this, they have completed my level. And now touching this box does not mean they win the level immediately. It marks them as having completed the level. So if they go through this box, the pass trigger, and then they jump off the map and collide with a fall trigger, then it marks the level completed and it'll kick them back out to the menu. So this pass trigger is needed to show the end of the level. The last thing on this list is the directional light. Now this directional light is the light that's providing the light for all of your scene right now. And for just about every single level, it'll be okay to leave this at its default because its default provides pretty good lighting. But if for scenic reasons you want to change the color or the intensity of the light, you can come here, select this white box for the color, and now I can change my lighting to whatever color I want it to be in my scene. And here maybe I'm feeling a little bit more tropical. I can tone my color a little bit more like this. Gives it a little bit more of a tropical feel maybe. And then if I want my scene to be darker, I can change down my intensity to 0.5 or by clicking and dragging here, I can test different intensities there. And so I think I'm gonna leave mine at one for this scene, but you can change it there if you want. Now, there are other lighting settings. If you go to Window, Lighting, Settings, it'll pull up this lighting window. Most of these settings, you can change them in Unity, but as soon as you export your level, it resets them to the settings that are in the default right now. So most of the time, nothing here is worth changing because it won't make a difference. The one thing I do recommend doing is unclicking this auto-generate box. It prevents the scene from baking lighting, which just takes up a whole lot of your computing power and is completely unnecessary. So just unclick that box right now. And if you had a different sky box you'd wanna change, you can select here, the default skybox, this little circle next to it, and you can change your skybox to something else. Um, the Human Fall Flat Workshop package only comes with one other skybox, 
which you can scroll up and is space, just like that. And you can download others off the internet by searching Unity Skybox. But really, you just have the default and the space one to work with if you want a different skybox for your level. I'm gonna stick with default just because it fits my scene a little bit more than, than space would. One issue right now, however, is that I don't yet have the default lighting settings that the export does to my level because I haven't exported it yet. So when I go into play mode, as you can see, the lighting kind of became all whack. It's not what it's supposed to be. It's way too shady. So I want to get the default lighting settings the game is going to put into my level in my level right now. And the way to do that is to export my level. Um, the first thing I need to do before the export though is I need to make sure that there's a thumbnail for my level. So I'm going to press play. I'm going to get back into test mode. And then I'm going to press F8 on my keyboard. And instead of controlling my character now with ASDW, I'm now controlling the camera. And so I can move around and I can find what a good thumbnail for my level would be. Maybe something like this. And I'm going to press F9 and it's going to capture the thumbnail for my level. So now I can go back to human, human export and it has my thumbnail for the level right there. So I'm gonna name this test, put in the description test, and I'll be able to export this dream. I'm gonna hit save. And now this export process, it ranges in time, but usually it's done in between 20 seconds and two minutes, depending on how big your level is. All right, now that my export has completed, you can see that my lighting settings have been set to the human fall flat default, which is what I want. And actually, since I did export my level, I don't have to test it in Unity this time, but I, I can actually load up my game and I can test it inside of human fall flat. All right, so here inside of my human fall flat game, I can hit play, local, select level, and then in the local levels, it will have the levels that I've exported from Unity. And so I can jump into this, which is the one that we just made. And we can see I'm in my level that I made in Unity, playing it inside of the Human Fall Flat game. So I'm gonna give this level a quick test. Um, I'll show you in time-lapse to make sure it all works. And we'll go from there. There, well, we can see that my pass trigger worked because when I passed through my pass trigger and I jumped off the map, it kicked me back out to the level. And I think everything worked just like I wanted it to. So that finishes up our third tutorial. For the fourth tutorial, we're gonna jump back into Unity and we're gonna look at colliders, rigid bodies, and net bodies to make sure all the objects in your level are gonna be working correctly. So stay tuned. Thank mm -hmm. you.